So differences exist, okay? So what's your limiting factor? Is it technical? Is it physical? Is it tactical or is it psychological? What is stopping you bowling uh, as fast as you can bowl? Okay, what are those reasons? And then you have to identify it. You have to make a plan, okay? So I always start with technique, okay? Technique underpins everything, okay? There's no point looking like a massive bodybuilder and have those, all these Olympic lifts and, you know, deadlifting three times the body weight, Olympic lift 100 kilograms if your technique is shot to bits, okay? If you're not hitting these, there's no point. Like, if you've got a 200 kilogram deadlift, okay, but but your impulse stride is in front of you, your takeoff stride is in front of you because you want to jump high, you'll never bowl quickly, okay? You'll never bowl quickly. But research shows that. The jumping high will mean there's more force coming down on back foot contact, you're going to have a heavy back foot contact. You're going to be too long on back foot contact. Remember, you can't split your body down the middle and one side moves at different speeds. If I'm spending too long on back foot contact, okay, the front leg is going to go in that same direction. The hips are closed. So it's going to go down to fine leg, but I'm bowling that way. Okay, all because... And then when that happens, it's a stumble reflex. So the leg will come down quickly, protective, cutaneous reflex, and the leg will, will collapse because the trunk, the heavy part in your head will be over that knee and it can't cope with that. So I'm now closed and I want to bowl that way. So I have to have an open around the gate motion with the leg. Okay, so there's nothing going towards target. All because heavy back foot contact, whether you're need to pivot because you knee dominant side on or whether you're going forward or front on or midway and that stems from impulse stride wanting to jump as high as you can whether that's consciously or subconsciously because you've done lots of weight training you know more knee most knee dominant bowlers and i'll cover that later love the heavy stuff their their single leg squat jump is probably higher because a single leg squat jump is more about strength, okay? And it's got no relevance to fast bowling at all. Um, there's no point having that, okay? If your technique is rubbish. Uh, rubbish is not the right word, but it's not right. It's not efficient, okay? You can, you'll never outrun a poor technique. It'll catch up with you somewhere, okay? If you have a hinge on a door, that's always the same. You can change the door as much as you want to. You can put muscle on it. You can look fandango, but the joint will always be the same and it will break at the same place. Okay. The question is then with the technique, how many of those attractors do you hit? How many, how many of these do you hit? Okay. For me, I'm a, like an engineering sort of approach to coaching. If it's four or more of them, it's technique is not your limiting factor. It's fine, okay? It's more psychological, physical, or ta tactical, okay? If it's less than four, if you're having three, one, two, three of these, okay, it's definitely technique, okay? You can be as strong as you want to, but if you're not hitting uh, in one of these six, uh, you're not hitting th four more of these six, you're not gonna bowl quickly, and technique is your limiting factor. But then it's about intervention. How can we change that technique? So is it hardware? So is it your body? Is it your muscles? Or is it software issue? Is it the brain? Is it motor learning? Is it skill acquisition? So there's a different intervention method that's needed. The best one that I came up with is, is the skill stability paradigm, okay? It covers everything. So what I'll do in the next one, okay, next part of the series, is I'll go through motor learning, okay? How we can change technique if, if it's a technical flaw, okay? And after that, then uh, I'll talk about, and within that, there'll be hip or knee dominant, okay? And explain the differences that exist. And then I'll go through the S&C side of it, 
um, and then hopefully you can see then how it's all entwined and it's all link interlinked. There's no one size fits all to fast bowling. There's no cookie cut the program. Everyone is different. Okay, whether you're whether you're a slower twitch animal, you got to be fast twitch if you're bowling. If you're slow twitch, you're going to bowl spin. But if you're more fast twitch dominant, if you're a hip dominant bowler, a knee dominant bowler, front on side on differences exist long run up short run up okay so uh, hopefully this series will help you understand that um, it's an individual approach uh, and there's no uh, guesswork involved in the pace lab system thanks for listening see you soon